Vitamins and minerals are traditionally considered micronutrients because they're essential to our health, meaning we have to get them from food to live. There's only one way to know if you're getting enough micronutrients. You see, having enough micronutrients and eating enough micronutrients are two different things. For example, we may eat all the vitamin B12 that we want, but if we have a certain kind of anemia, our intestines won't absorb it. Honestly, the only way to know if we're getting enough micronutrients is to measure them from our blood. Of course, the problem is that tests are costly and won't necessarily be covered by health insurance. So the second best way is to eat a good variety of micronutrient-rich foods and hope you'll get enough micronutrients from those. If you're new here, my name is Amy and I'm an ISSA certified elite trainer, precision nutrition certified nutrition coach, and PSA ranked and rated figure skating coach. It always surprises me how often people engaged in sports just don't have a really good grasp on nutrition. And I often provide nutrition coaching to athletes to improve their sports performance. But here's the thing, it's not just athletes. I often work with the parents of athletes, the families of athletes, and even other coaches. Help them create change and get real results. Poor nutrition can lead to fatigue, dehydration, and poor health, all of which can negatively affect your body's performance, whether you're an athlete or not. Fueling your body correctly is often overlooked, but it's a critical aspect of sports and exercise performance and academic and work performance and even your emotional well-being. So it goes without saying that nutrition is a huge part of your fitness and wellness. I've already covered workout nutrition and macronutrients, but in this video, I'm gonna help you understand micronutrients. The good thing is you already know how to eat a balanced diet if you've watched those other videos. And if you've missed those other videos, there's a link in the description down below. So with a balanced diet, you should be getting most of your micronutrient needs. There are different classes of food that you should be eating because all of them have a different micronutrient composition. Those are vegetables, also fruits and berries, fish, seeds and nuts, dairy, as long as you're not allergic to milk protein. And that's it really. Of course, you can and should eat more food groups. But the point is that those four food groups will essentially fill your micronutrient needs. Of course, as with everything, there are a couple of exceptions. The first one is vitamin D. Vitamin D is an important vitamin in our body and we use it for several reasons. It's also essential to help our body absorb calcium. Unfortunately, vitamin D deficiency is very common. It's estimated that about 1 billion, 1 billion people worldwide now have low levels of vitamin D. And that's because these days we're just not getting enough sun. I mean, I know that's true where I live here in the North. We just don't get outside enough to get enough vitamin D from the sun. Most people in North America and Europe have at least a moderate vitamin D deficiency. Vitamin D is actually different than the other vitamins our body needs. It functions as a hormone. Every single cell in your body has receptors for vitamin D. Most people don't realize that they're deficient. Some common risk factors for vitamin D deficiency are being overweight or obese, not eating much fish or dairy, limited sun exposure because either you live in an area that's far away from the equator where there's little sun year round, or you spend most of your time indoors always using sunscreen when you go outside. I know we need sunscreen, but it also blocks the vitamin D. Eating a strict vegan diet, since most dietary vitamin D comes from fish oils, egg yolks, and milk. So suppose you're not getting enough vitamin D, like most people. It can lead to serious health complications, such as cardiovascular disease, severe asthma in children, high blood pressure, and cognitive impairment in older adults. Vitamin D is essential for many metabolic processes in your body. And vitamin D deficiency raises the risk of diabetes, some cancers, dementia, cardiovascular diseases, and more. Your immune system also relies on vitamin D. So what are the symptoms of a vitamin D deficiency? Feeling tired. Of course, there can be several reasons for fatigue, but vitamin D deficiency is often an overlooked cause of it lower back and bone pain. According to Healthline, one study demonstrated 
that people with a vitamin D deficiency were nearly twice as likely to experience bone pain in their legs, ribs, or joints compared to those that have vitamin D levels in the normal range. Hair loss. Again, like all of these symptoms, it can always be caused by other things. And one of the leading causes of hair loss is stress. But there have been several studies that also show a link between vitamin D deficiency and hair loss. Slow wound healing. Inadequate vitamin D levels may lead to poor wound healing following surgery, injury, or infection. Depression. There have been a few studies that demonstrated that increasing vitamin D levels helps to improve mood. But as always, the only way to know is to see your healthcare provider and have labs done. But again, those tests can be expensive and often health insurance doesn't cover them. Most adults need 50 micrograms a day to get the target blood concentration of vitamin D. Here are some ways to naturally ensure that you're getting enough vitamin D. Eat wild caught salmon. Three and a half ounces of wild caught salmon has 125% of the recommended daily amount of vitamin D. And it's full of healthy fats too. Eat mushrooms. Excluding fortified foods, mushrooms are actually the only good plant source of vitamin D. Like humans, mushrooms can synthesize vitamin D when exposed to UV light. However, mushrooms produce vitamin D2, whereas animals produce vitamin D3. Unfortunately, natural dietary sources of vitamin D are limited, especially if you're a vegetarian or don't like fish. But some products that don't naturally contain vitamin D are fortified with vitamin D. Foods that are fortified with vitamin D are milk, orange juice, some cereals, and oatmeal. Eat egg yolks. Vitamin D levels in egg yolks depend on sun exposure and the chickens feed vitamin D content. Eggs from chickens given a vitamin D feed may have up to seven times the recommended daily intake. Eat canned tuna. Of course, you have to watch how much tuna you eat to make sure you're not getting too much mercury, but still inappropriate amounts. Tuna is an excellent source of niacin, vitamin K, and vitamin D. For extra insurance, I just take a vitamin D supplement. I like this one from Thorin, and it's the one I take every day. There's a link to it in the description down below. So, do you think you're getting enough vitamin D in your diet? If not, are you going to start adding more? Leave me a comment down below and let me know. Your metabolism, the rate at which you burn calories, requires certain chemicals for it to function at a high quality. Let's look at four of the most important ones. B complex. This vitamin group helps break down carbohydrates, fats, and protein into energy that your body can use. In particular, B1 breaks down carbohydrates and fats. B5 works on fatty acids. B6 takes care of breaking down protein. B12 also helps break down carbohydrates and protein along with producing red blood cells. B2 helps to move energy into cells where it can be used by muscles and organs. I take a vitamin B supplement from Thorn as well. This is the one I take and there's a link to that in the description down below. Just a note that this video is not sponsored by Thorn. I just really like Thorn products. Remember, always discuss any supplementation with your doctor. I'm not a doctor. I'm a nutrition coach. It is not the same thing. Coenzyme Q10, CoQ10, as it's commonly called, increases the production of energy within a cell's mitochondria. Specifically, CoQ10 increases the amount of oxygen available to cells. This boost in energy translates to more endurance as it enhances muscle strength while exercising and increases their efficiency at the level in which they work. I take this one from Thorne, but again, there's a link down below and it's not sponsored and please talk to your doctor before you take any supplements. Creatine, I discussed this in my workout nutrition video. Creatine is found in animal products and is used by your muscles to store energy. However, if you're a vegetarian or don't get enough animal protein, you can suffer from a low level of creatine too. Studies have demonstrated that creatine in the proper amounts can improve muscle strength by 
The increase in strength can also translate to weight loss. As proven in an article by the Journal of Strength and Conditioning Research, they found that weight training with creatine supplementation resulted in more weight loss than without the supplementation. Little is known about the long-term side effects, but no consistent toxicity has been reported in studies of creatine supplementation. In a study of creatine side effects, diarrhea was the most common, followed by muscle cramping. Some reports showed kidney, liver, and blood functions were not affected by short-term creatine use in healthy adults. But again, definitely discuss this with your doctor before taking any creatine supplementation. Iron, we all know that iron is essential, but do you know precisely why it's so important? And if you're getting enough iron, more importantly, do you know what to eat to make sure you're getting plenty of iron on a daily basis? Iron carries oxygen to our muscles so they can burn fat. Think of how a fire burns. Without oxygen, it smolders, but doesn't burn. Add oxygen and it instantly flares up and burns very hot. Your body is the same way. If you're deficient in iron, you may feel sluggish. Your aerobic capacity and physical endurance get reduced. So it's essential to understand precisely how iron helps and the symptoms of an iron deficiency so that you understand just how important it is to get enough iron. Iron is an essential mineral that your body needs for growth and development. It helps carry hemoglobin in your body. Hemoglobin is in your red blood cells. It's what carries oxygen throughout your entire body. If your iron is low, your hemoglobin is also low. In turn, your body's not receiving maximum oxygenation. And we all know we need oxygen to live. If you're not getting enough iron, how do you know? What are the symptoms? The only way to be 100% sure that your symptoms are caused by an iron deficiency is again to have the lab work done. But like I said before, this can be costly and often insurance doesn't cover that. So here are some common symptoms so that you know when you need to contact your doctor and have a conversation. Probably the most common symptom is feeling tired or extra fatigued for no apparent reason. And you may feel tired because less oxygen is reaching your tissues. It's depriving you of energy. Another common symptom is pale skin, gums, or lower eyelids. If you pull your eyelid down, it should have a vibrant red color. But if you pull it down and it's pale pink or yellowish, this could be a sign of an iron deficiency. Another common symptom is headaches or dizziness, especially in women. And dry, damaged hair can also be a sign of low iron. Another more severe sign is shortness of breath. And in that case, you should definitely see your doctor pretty immediately. These are just a few of the many iron deficiency symptoms. Keep in mind, they're all caused because your body isn't getting enough oxygen. It's definitely something you wanna have checked out. If you know you have an iron deficiency, how can you improve it? What can you eat to increase your iron? First things first, eat your vegetables, but not any veggies. Eat leafy green vegetables that are high in iron, like organic spinach, kale, and broccoli. Eat sesame seeds, raisins, and dates. They are high in vitamin C and iron, so you're killing two birds with one stone there. And on that note, increase your vitamin C because that actually helps with the absorption of iron. Grass-fed meat and wild-caught fish are also excellent sources of iron. But what about multivitamins? Can you take just one pill per day and forget all your problems? Unfortunately, it's not that simple. First of all, multivitamins have many micronutrients combined into one pill. Some of them can be in minimal amounts. For example, a typical multivitamin has five to 20 micrograms of vitamin D, and that's not nearly enough to cover your needs. Also, some vitamins are better taken on their own or with a different combination of vitamins. In extensive studies, there hasn't been any rise in mortality attributed to taking a multivitamin, but there hasn't been any lowering effects either. If you have a deficiency in any micronutrient, you'll probably need that micronutrient in a larger dose than a multivitamin will provide. Eating the various foods in at least four main food groups will cover most of your micronutrient needs. In the cases of diseases, primarily intestinal, 
that can cause malabsorption, you should probably consider measuring your micronutrient levels and consulting with your doctor. Leave me a comment below and let me know what you're going to do to make sure that you're getting enough micronutrients. And if you need some new delicious breakfast ideas, I have my free brand new protein packed breakfast guide. Just go to amyrickacom slash freebies and get your copy right there. There's lots of other stuff on that freebies page too. And you don't have to pick just one. You can get as many of those as you like as my gift to you for watching this video. If you like this video, please give it a like and share it with your friends and on social media too. And remember, I post at least three videos a week and you don't want to miss any of them. So remember to subscribe and tap that bell so you never miss a video. This is Amy. Thank you for watching. I will see you real soon. Bye.